Today we'll be reviewing Seiko's modernized version of their classic automatic tuna can. Before we get to the present, let's start with the past and review the history of this interesting watch. Seiko started developing dive watches in the mid-1960s. In 1965, they released their first 150-meter dive watch, known as the 62 MAS. Ten years later, Seiko released the original tuna can, model 6159-022. Interestingly enough, seven years prior, a Japanese saturation diver complained to Seiko about helium gas release breaking his watch crystal during his ascent from the ocean floor in his work as a commercial diver. To combat this problem, they utilized a special type of L-shaped gasket that proved to be helium-resistant. Seiko re-released a modern version of the 6159 in the year 2000. The model number is SBDX005 and only a thousand were made. This takes us to the current version of the automatic tuna can, the SBDX001, which was first released back in 2009. Make no mistake about it, it is a very large watch. It weighs 143 grams with the strap and is 17 millimeters thick. That being said, since its lug-to-lug -lug length is very short at approximately 40 millimeters, it is pretty accommodating for a small wrist. The bezel is 120 clicks and very precise, as the video here shows, aside from my finger occasionally slipping. As the case back markings indicate on the upper right, this watch is made out of stainless steel and titanium. Nothing on it is ceramic. There is a very popular misconception on the watch forums. The movement in the SBDX011 is the caliber 8L35. It's said to be based on the Grand Seiko 9S55 movement sans finishing and regulation. There are a handful of people who can service these movements outside of Seiko, like Jack at IWW who's located in North Carolina in the US. If you need parts, it will most likely have to go back to Japan. For what it's worth, Seiko is apparently in the process of opening up a non-Japanese service center as well. Now that we reviewed the key components and history of the tuna can, I'd like to give you my conclusion. Basically, it's simple. The pros is that this watch has a very rich history that you don't see that much anymore because a lot of watch brands nowadays are resurrected since the 90s. And the second main issue is it's a very well-made watch. It's a very unique watch. It's a watch design that you're not going to see being made by anyone else. And when you hold it in your hands, you will quickly realize how well-made it is. The con of that is that when you hold it in your hands, you will realize it's a very heavy and large watch. And even though it has short lugs, as I said before, you will know that it's on your wrist. And you have to remember that originally this watch was made for professional divers, and the likelihood is nowadays most people who will buy it aren't going to be wearing it for that reason. So it's just part of its original design, the size and weight. So that's basically my review. I hope this was helpful to you guys, and thanks for watching.